I'm Nick Davis and I work in the zoology department which is right next to Pembroke College and the heart of the department is this wonderful museum. You see this fin whale behind me which was washed up on the beach in Sussex about 150 years ago. And the aim of the museum is really to display animal diversity in all its glory. And those of us working in the main department in this direction here are interested in how this biodiversity evolves and develops. And then behind me is the David Attenborough building where there's a group of conservation biologists who are interested in how to conserve this biodiversity. We all live in a diminishing natural world now and we're trying to do our best to look after the diversity which um, is part of our own lives too. So Charles Darwin was a student here and we still have his beetle collection and we've also got some of the original finches which he collected on the voyage of the beagle and of course these various beak shapes were one of the uh, observations which triggered his ideas of natural selection and it's really Darwin's evolutionary ideas which form the central theme of all the work we do here in the zoology department. So I got interested in biology from being a very keen bird watcher when I was a little boy and this is the passion which still drives my interest today. And I don't do my work in the museum here, I do all my work out in the fens and I'm interested in the evolutionary battle between cuckoos and their hosts. This is a small corner of what Darwin imagined as an entangled bank of interactions in the natural world. So even in a constant physical environment, evolution would still continue relentlessly as individuals did battle with predators, parasites, competitors and so on. And the cuckoo host interactions provide a lovely model system for doing experiments to look at an evolutionary arms race in nature. So I've got with me here a reed warbler's nest. Reed warblers are the commonest host in the fens. And in this nest, there are four eggs. Three of the eggs are the eggs of the reed warbler, but the slightly larger one, and an almost perfect match in color and spotting, is the egg of a cuckoo. Now, if the hosts accept this cuckoo egg, they're in trouble. They're literally sitting on a bomb set to explode in a few weeks time, one which will destroy their clutch because the cuckoo chick hatches first and still naked and blind, this little cuckoo chick heaves all the reed warbler's eggs out of the nest and the reed warblers are then doomed into raising a cuckoo chick instead of a brood of their own. So our experiments show that actually reed warblers are on the lookout for cuckoo's eggs. They've got defences and we've tested this by model eggs. It's quite good fun. You go around popping these different coloured model eggs into reed warblers' nests and not surprisingly, if there's a different coloured egg in their nest, the reed warblers throw it out. So the cuckoos have evolved a good match, and this good match is essential for fooling the hosts. We're also very interested in the spotting patterns in eggs. It turns out these are signatures. They're the way in which the hosts mark their own eggs. This is my egg in the form of a series of spots and squiggles. And the cuckoos have then have to evolve good forgeries by writing on their eggs in the same squiggles and spots, this egg is yours too, so that we have a signature forgery arms race. And then there's lots of other wonderful cuckoo tricks. One is the cuckoos lay their eggs incredibly fast and with great secrecy, so their laying visit to the nest is just 10 seconds. And again our experiments show that this is important too, because if you show the reed warblers the sight of a cuckoo at their nest, a stuffed cuckoo, that alerts them to even greater defences. And one of the best tricks of all is the trick of the cuckoo chick once it hatches. You might wonder why the reed warblers continue to feed this monster even it grows as it grows to several times their own body size. Well, the cuckoo chick's trick is a vocal one. Its begging calls are very rapid and high-pitched and they sound like a whole brood of hungry reed warblers. So the reed warblers see something strange but they hear what sounds to them like a whole brood of their own chicks and that's sufficient to trick them into feeding the cuckoo chick. And we've shown that by experiments where we broadcast little sounds through loudspeakers next to reed warbler's nest to see which are the cues which stimulate reed warbler provisioning. So really one of the very, one of, one of the great interests in our work is that how organisms pay attention just to a few key features in their world which stimulate their behaviour 
and in doing so that then opens them to trickery. So we of course get exploited in exactly the same way every day by outrageous advertisements and so studying reed warblers and cuckoos is not only a lovely example of an evolutionary arms race but it's perhaps a window onto our own vulnerability too.